In 185 AD, someone in China looked up in the sky and saw a new star. It sparkled and did not move, so it couldn't be a comet or an asteroid or spaceship. This new star stayed in the sky for 8 months and then disappeared forever. That new star was a supernova. A star that had run out of fuel and then collapsed in on itself in a thousandth of a second creating a massive explosion. This is the same picture what is left from that same explosion that Chinese astronomers saw 2000 years ago. RCW86 supernova remnant which is approximately 8000 light years away. Later, Western astronomers also described supernovas as new stars. In the 16th century, astronomers like Tycho Brahe and Johannes Kepler also witnessed supernova explosions firsthand. They spotted a light brighter than any other star in the sky, so bright as to be visible during the day for a time. So this is the same supernova remnant SN1604 that Kepler saw it explode. It wasn't until 1930s that supernovas were identified and explained. Historically, in our galaxy Milky Way, a supernova happens about once every 50 years or so. For example, roughly 36 years ago, we have seen SN1987A explode. Put another way, a star explodes every second or so somewhere in the universe, and some of those are not too far from Earth. And the perfect example is Betelgeuse, which is about to go supernova any second now. Betelgeuse is one of the brightest stars in the night sky and in the very close proximity to Earth and is about to explode. Before we get into this, let's first see types of star explosions. Starting with the smallest type called Nova. This explosion happens when a white dwarf star pulls matter off of a neighboring red giant star until a powerful nuclear fusion explosion happens on the dwarf surface. This type of explosion does not destroy the star and explosions happen continuously. And the next is Supernova. Well, it's much more powerful than a Nova but can shine brighter than the entire galaxy for a brief time. And there are two types of supernovas. There is type 1. This is when a white dwarf star pulls matter from a neighboring star until the dwarf's dead core reignites in a thermonuclear explosion that destroys the star. This is similar to a Nova but the explosion is much more powerful and bright. And then there is type 2 supernova. This is when a star several times more massive than the sun runs out of nuclear fuel and collapses under its own gravity until it explodes creating a beautiful yet deadly spectacle to observers. Betelgeuse is a red supergiant and red supergiants live fast and die young, exhausting its supply of hydrogen fuel in just under 10 million years, creating type 2 supernova explosion. Betelgeuse has inspired a lot of astronomical scare stories because it's a nearby red giant star that is expected to explode soon as a powerful supernova, destroying everything on its path and emitting deadliest dose of radiation across space. On top of that, Betelgeuse supernova will be the closest explosion to Earth in recorded human history. To put it into perspective, the supernova that we saw in 1987 is 160,000 light years away. We are completely safe. Kepler's supernova was 20,000 light years away, still very safe, but Betelgeuse is approximately 600 light years away. Additionally, Betelgeuse is about 1,400 times larger than our Sun. If it were placed in the Sun's position in our solar system, Betelgeuse would extend past the orbit of Jupiter and its atmosphere still will be in the Saturn's orbit. Recently, I often see headlines that nearby Betelgeuse is going to explode soon. Well, what these stories often gloss over is that the nearby and soon are relative terms. The way astronomers use them is quite different from the way we use those words in everyday conversation. Let's first look at how soon part. Astronomers estimate that Betelgeuse is approximately 10 million years old and it began expanding into a red giant 40,000 years ago. That means it has begun nuclear fusion of helium in its core, creating oxygen and carbon, starting down the pathway to core collapse and eventual supernova detonation. Exactly how long it will take for that to happen is unknown. Astronomers can only make estimates using models of stellar evolution. Those models, in turn, depend on Betelgeuse's mass and rotation period, both of which are imprecisely known. If Betelgeuse is almost 20 times as massive as the Sun, as most studies indicate, then it will explode sometime within the next 100,000 years, leaving a celestial splatter similar to a Cassiopeia A. 
It's more likely to blow up later in that time frame, but it's not impossible that it could explode tomorrow. Still, even if you assume that an explosion could happen randomly anytime within that period, the odds of Betelgeuse exploding in our lifetime are less than 0.1%. If you have read headlines about Betelgeuse getting dimmer and fainting which indicates to an explosion, it's true, but this decline is completely consistent with known variability associated with pulsations in the convective course of rad supergiants like Betelgeuse. The likelihood that you will live to see Betelgeuse going boom is probably a good solid zero. Now anyway, let's look at how close it is. It's not so easy to measure the distance to a bright red giant star like Betelgeuse. Different methods give answers ranging from 550 light years to nearly 700 light years, about 150 times as far away as Alpha Centauri. Even at the low distance estimates, radiation from the Betelgeuse supernova will certainly have some measurable effect on the Earth's environment but probably only a minor impact on life. Betelgeuse is too far away to significantly ionize Earth's atmosphere. For instance, one way to evaluate the risk is to look at the consequences of past nearby supernovas. It's not so easy to find evidence of them, which is one strong indication that only the very closest supernovas present much of a risk. A recent study claims to find the chemical evidence of two supernova explosions between 1.7 million and 3.2 million years ago. These explosions allegedly happened on the other 300 light years from Earth, meaning they hit us with the radiation give or take four times as strong as we would expect from Betelgeuse. There is no clear sign that they had any effect on life, however, it's possible they caused a period of climate cooling. But it's also possible that the changing climate was completely unrelated. At any rate, there was no mass extinction during that era. But honestly, we all want to see it explode, and let's say Betelgeuse explodes in up to one month, and what will happen? The first time we will receive that Betelgeuse when supernova is neutrino emission. Stars emit a huge number of neutrinos as they die, and emissions increases in intensity as the star gets closer to an explosion. Given the current sensitivity of neutrino telescopes, and the fact that Betelgeuse is so close by, I imagine we would know weeks or even a year ahead of the time the radiation and the light from the Betelgeuse supernova reaches us, as neutrino telescopes become increasingly sensitive. It's possible that we will be able to place stronger constraints on when Betelgeuse will explode. That way we can predict that whether Betelgeuse has already exploded, if its neutrino signature is that of a star that will explode inside 600 years. When Betelgeuse explodes, before it reaches us, it will be decelerated by the interstellar medium, radiate all its energy away, mix into all of the hydrogen that makes up diffuse gas in our galaxy, and form a bunch of new dust. The radiation from the supernova is slightly more interesting. The Betelgeuse supernova will not be on the high end of the luminosity distribution for supernovae. However, because it's so close to us, it will be one of the brightest objects in the sky for years. There is a method called apparent magnitude to calculate the luminosity of stellar objects. It's a bit confusing, but for the sake of simplicity, in this method, dimmer the star, higher the magnitude number. Brighter the star, it's lower. So in this table, we can see until what point we stop and start seeing lights in the sky. Like Hubble Space Telescope can catch one of the faintest lights in the cosmos till plus 30 in the apparent magnitude. But on the opposite end, the brightest stellar object in our sky, our sun, minus 26.7 and the full moon is minus 12.7 in the apparent magnitude. Betelgeuse here is expected to be minus 14, brighter than the full moon and it will be up there perfectly visible during the day and it will last for several weeks. Then for about two years, it will slowly decline in brightness until it gets as bright as Venus. This decline will continue for years and decades until it's no longer visible to the naked eye. Ultimately, it could become either a neutron star or a black hole. To become a black hole, the material left over by the supernova explosion would have to equal more than three solar masses. It's even possible that Betelgeuse has already exploded, since it's approximately 600 light years away. That means that whatever appears to be happening with Betelgeuse actually happened in 14th century, when bubonic plates spread across Europe. Generally, the closest safe distance between Earth and the supernova is around 50 and 100 light years. But it's still hypothetical numbers. Nobody knows what effects will it bring because Betelgeuse will be the closest supernova explosion in human history. 
But let's say if a supernova to go off within about 30 light years from us, that would definitely lead to major effects and catastrophe on the Earth. X-rays and more energetic gamma rays from the supernova will cause a mass extinction, frying and cooking living organisms on the surface. Then it could destroy the ozone layer that protects us from solar ultraviolet rays. It also could ionize nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere, leading to the formation of large amounts of smog-like nitrous oxide in the atmosphere. Fortunately, we don't have any type 2 supernova stars located within 50 light years from Earth, but there is one star, Ike Pegasi b, it's the nearest known supernova progenitor candidate. It's a binary star system located about 150 light years from us. It's still a white dwarf and it will probably take millions of years until it explodes. Then again, we see a lot of headlines in news agencies about Betelgeuse exploding anytime now because it's showing instability and fading and we will get to see the greatest fireworks humanity has ever seen. But associating the recent optical fading of Betelgeuse with imminent explosion is a logical fallacy known as motivated reasoning. Motivated reasoning is a phenomenon studied in cognitive science and social psychology that uses emotionally biased reasoning to produce justifications and decisions that are most desired rather than those that are most logical, while still reducing cognitive dissonance. So it's kind of similar to confirmation bias. In short, those sensational headlines are partly clickbait because let's be honest, we all want to see that goddamned firework. Well, thanks for watching. Please support channel on Patreon and subscribe if you didn't. Hit the notification button not to miss upcoming episodes and hit the like button if you genuinely liked the video. If you haven't liked it, comment down below so we can discuss it.